Are you planning to apply for your first data analyst role in the UK? Then you're watching the right video, as I'll be sharing with you some of the common interview questions asked during my job applications for a data analyst role. And also in this video, I'll be sharing with you some job vacancies out for a data analyst role that you can apply for. And the good thing about these job vacancies is that they come with the tier two visa sponsorship to work as a skilled worker here in the United Kingdom. So if this is something that will interest you, don't go anywhere, keep watching till the end. Before I get right into the video, I'd like to give a special shout out to the sponsor of this video, Smart Approaches. Now, Smart Approaches provide practical training for those who are planning to transition into data analytics and business analysis. They help you with your smooth transition into this field by training you on the skills and the tools you need to have before you start pushing out your job application. Now for those applying for a data analyst tool, you're gonna to be trained on how to use some tools such as Microsoft Visio, Slack, Jira, Confluence, Miro, Figma, and many others. And also if you are planning to apply for a data analyst role in the UK, they will be training you on how to make use of some statistical tools such as advanced Microsoft Excel, SQL, Power BI, and many others. And the good thing about enrolling with smart approaches is that they're not just going to teach you how to make use of those tools, they're also going to teach you some skills on how to build your portfolio, how to write your CV, and also help you with job interview coaching and LinkedIn optimization. So guys, if you're looking for a way of struggling with those courses online, you're not get, getting grip of the tools or the skills required to apply for your data analysis tool, or you will be getting rejections or rejection email from every of your applications, they want to check out Smart Approaches. I'm going to put a link in the description of my video so you can check out uh, Smart Approaches, ask your questions, and they're going to help you with your journey towards transitioning into data analyst role or business analyst role. The next cohort for the business analyst role starts from the 10th of July, 2023. Why for those planning to get a job role as a data analyst, the next cohort starts on the 11th of July, 2023. So guys, you don't want to miss this opportunity to learn and get help towards transitioning into tech. And also in the next couple of days on the 29th of May, 2023, I will also be organizing my first YouTube live here on YouTube and I'll be answering all your questions as regards how to transition into tech and the good thing is smart approaches will also be available on that day to also answer your questions and you know give you all the full information you need to have as regards getting your first data analyst or business analyst role in the United Kingdom. So guys, don't miss it. Click on the link in the description below. For those who have been following my channel, um, many of you know that I recently got four job offers as a data analyst here in the United Kingdom. And a couple of weeks ago, I resumed um, my job role as a data analyst here in the UK. And you know, um, despite the fact that I went through a lot of rejections, I was also fortunate to be able to attend a lot of interviews for a data analyst role. That's why I'm coming here right now to explain and share with you guys some of the interview questions I was asked when applying for the data analyst role. Now, the first question many of the um, interviewers or many of the people that interviewed me often ask is for me to tell them about my previous job experience and how my transferable skills are relevant to the job role I'm applying for. So this is the place where you have the floor to sell yourself to your potential employer. You're not giving the opportunity to tell them all you've done and how some of the things or most of the things you've done in the past are actually very relevant to your job role. Now, in a situation whereby you didn't mention some of the statistical tools you used in your previous job role, then most times the interviewer or the uh, member of the panel often asks you to mention some of the statistical tools you once used um, on your previous job roles. I remember when I applied for mine, and I was there selling to them some of the things I've done. However, I forgot or well, because of NERV, I didn't mention some of the tools. So um, in the course of my answer, one of the panel member was kind enough to ask me, oh, so Daniel, what were the tools you used when performing this uh, particular 
job role. So that's one of or one of the questions you are going to be faced if you're applying for a data analyst role in the United Kingdom. Now, another question I was often asked, I think I was asked this particular question on three different occasions during my interview. And the question is, how would you explain the difference between data mining and data profiling? Honestly, this is one of the questions that, you know, I had to sit down and, you know, check out how to, you know, properly answer the question. And this is something that you will definitely be asked during your interview. You must be able to, um, you know, explain how, you know, the difference between data mining and data profiling. Now, another question I'm often asked um, was, um, I think that this particular question um, got me a bit tensed on first occasion, but on some kind of occasion, I was able to get uh, understanding of how to answer this question. Now, I was told to explain data validation and data quality. No, I was not told to, uh, to explain or to define any of them. I was just told to share with them what I think about those two terms, which um, you need to also get yourself familiar um, with. And it's also important for me to mention that if you're going for any interview, regardless whether it's a data analyst role or any of the tech role or any role, um, by the way, you need to ensure that you're answering the questions using the STAR approach. Now, the STAR approach is the best way to answer any interview question. And for those who don't know, the STAR approach stands for S, stands for um, situation. It means that when answering any question, you need to be able to create a situation that is in alignment with the question asked. I don't know if that makes sense. Then the T is the task. Now, you need to be able to show them or tell them a particular task you carried out, you know, that further explains your answer to that particular question asked. Now, after you've talked about the situation, you've talked about your task, then you must be able to talk about the A, which is your action. So after you got the task, what did you do? You need to be able to explain to them what you did as regards the question asked. And after you've told them the, um, your action, don't stop there. You need to give them a result. What was the result of your action? Did um, your action provide a positive or a negative, feed, uh, a, a negative result? You need to be able to explain this to the interviewers just to further you know, buttress your points um, in relation to the question asked. And you, know, you can further go ahead and talk to them about some of the things you felt you could have done differently um, you know, for that particular uh, situation. So I also need to mention that aside from the interview question asked, I was given practical tests doing all of my interviews. I mean, all of the interviews I attended for a data analyst in the UK are to do a practical test. And this varies, honestly, depending on the organization you're applying to and the job description for the role you're applying, to, um, applying for at that time. Some of them tested me on advanced SQL. Some of them tested me on advanced um, Excel skills. Some went as far as testing me on how to use Tabloid and how, uh, you know, my technical skill with the use of Power BI. So it all depends on the job role and what you're expected to do for that particular um, you know, job role you are applying for. So these are some of the interview questions that I was asked. And of course, I was asked a lot of situational questions, you know, um, in a time whereby you are, um, are faced to prioritize, how do you prioritize? You know, you need to be able to create scenarios um, um, that you experienced on your previous job roles, you know, to be able to f explain those questions properly. How to prioritize, um, how do I work under pressure, how, um, what, what has always been my reporting, uh, pattern in my previous role. Uh, I think one of the questions I was also asked was um, to explain, um, you know, some some other internal, you know, internal information like some of the organization's um, ethics. So you need to really understand the organization you're applying for because you obviously need to be able to show to them that you've done your research, um, um, you know, on that particular organization. So moving on to some of the data analysis tool that are currently out so you can apply for if you're planning to transition into data analytics. Now, the first one is a junior data analyst tool at ScanSource Company. Now, this particular company is located in Bristol. And your role as a junior data analyst would be to provide the business with information and reports on business activities. Now, some of the responsibilities that you'll be taking up if you're able to successfully get this job is that you will play a fundamental role within the business intelligence team 
and your talent will help steer the business with the following responsibility. Now, the first one is collection of data and collation of reports, um, willingness to learn de and develop your skill set, supporting the generation of thoughtful business-driven insights. And you also, you also be able to present data as information with insights within it. Uh, you also work with stakeholders to ensure data is meaningful and relevant. You must also have strong analytical um, skills and as many others as you can see on the screen. Now, the most important part of every job, um, you know, vacancy is to understand the essential skills and experience required so that you don't waste your time applying for a particular job role you have no skill for. Now, the first thing is that you must have experience in either a data or analytic role and or administrative role. I must have excellent computer skills, including advanced Excel, such as cleaning, um, deduplicating, analyzing data, using formulas like if, VLOOKUP, and many others. I must also be highly numerate with a good technical skill set, uh, fantastic attention to details, excellent written and verbal communication skills, organization skills. Uh, you must also have the ability to plan, to prioritize in line with business requirements, good presentation skills, self-motivated with the ability to prioritize and execute. And the least academic qualification you must have before you can apply for this job role is a high school or a GCSE certificate. Now, for any job role, there are usually desirable skills and essential skills. So, if you're able to meet up with the um, essential skills, then you need to check out the desirable skills because this will give you upper edge compared to other people applying for this same job role. So, for the desirable skills and experience, you must have SQL skills, and this will be beneficial. It's not essential, but it's going to give you upper edge. edge. Uh, you must have experience using Power BI, and you must have a degree or professional qualification for you to be able to apply. And get this job role. Now, the physical requirements, you must be able to sit um, a office, at an office terminal for a long period and also travel up to 10% of the time. Now, some of the benefits that comes with this junior data analyst role include a 37.5 per week contract, flexible working. It means that sometimes you work from home and they also provide 25 days holidays plus bank holidays. That's a lot of holidays, <laughs> to be honest. You get a group uh, pension, uh, personal pension scheme, a group life assurance, and many others, free parking space, free drinks in the office, fun and collaborative environment, and every other benefit package you can see on the screen. Now, the second job vacancy available for a data analyst role is a senior data analyst role with wellish blood services. Now, this is gonna be with um, one of the NHS Trust here in the UK, in Wales to be precise, and the um, organization is involved in, you know, providing, uh, they, they, they're renowned with excellence for patients and donor care education and research. So if you're looking for a job role as a data analyst with the NHS, then this might be a right opportunity for um, you. So for this job role, they're looking for um, a highly motivated individual to join the Wellish Services uh, Business Intelligence Team who are responsible for provision of data, information, and reporting services. So that's basically uh, what the job description is really all about. Now, your main um, duty, if you're able to secure this job, will, be, will involve you know, providing leadership and supervision of a group of analysts. That means if you're applying for this role, you must have a previous data analyst experience. And also, you must be, you'll be assisting the head of information in continually developing best practice, business intelligence, and analytical uh, services, and advising decision makers at all levels. Now, your core duties will include provision of ad hoc data analysis and quality assurance of the work of others, continue uh, continual development of our analytical um, toolkits and our self-service information um, products and many others. Now, some of the qualification or the essential criteria for you know those that might be able to go to the next stage of this particular job vacancy, you must be educated and have a degree. Uh, you must have a postgraduate certificate level or equivalent. Uh, relevant experience. You must have evidence of continued personal and professional development, evidence of statistical trainings of education, in-depth specialist knowledge of um, mathematics, 
and many others. But the desirable criteria for this particular job role includes that you must have a master's degree in operational research and applied statistics or data science. So for those who are graduates of data science in the UK, this is a job role for you. And you must have up-to-date knowledge and understanding of current legislation, policy, procedure, code of conduct, and many others. Uh, you must have training in the use of SIMUL8, um, knowledge of G. AMP and also have knowledge of the software development cycle and many others. Now, for your experience, you must you know have experience with the use of some statistical programming language like R and Python. Uh, you must have experience using advanced statistical modeling tools, advanced um, experience in the use of SQL um, server database and ability to write SQL queries and many others. So guys, if you have experience um, and you're able to meet up with these job goals, then I want to check out the link in the description below so you can push out your application for this job goal. So guys, getting a data analyst role in the United Kingdom can be very challenging. However, it is very much possible. So if you find this video resourceful, please click on the like button. If you're coming across my channel for the first time, please click on the red subscribe button below to join the amazing growing family. And for my tennis subscribers, Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you. So this will be the end of this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.